Hi folks, Leslie with Good To Go Survival and Prep. Recently I've had a few people that asked me questions about pack stoves and cooking devices, so I decided to do a comparison and let you what I, know what I use and why I'm using it. Now, this is just my personal preference, but hopefully this will get you thinking about your own needs and wants in portable cooking devices. Now, I should also note that I really prefer biomass stoves whenever possible because one, if you've got a good supply of twigs and stuff, you're never going to run out of fuel. And then two, you know, you don't have to pack fuel around with you. With the exception of short-term incidents, you know, three to four days, then, you know, fuel, fuel stoves, not too bad. I have no complaints about that. But this is what I currently carry in my Bob. This is the Bush Buddy. It weighs in at 5.1 ounces. It's a little expensive at 120 bucks. But there is an alternative out there. Uh, recently I've been seeing a lot of ads for the Solo Stove and it's the same type of design. This is a wood gas stove. And if you're familiar with that technology, you know the advantages. If not, I'm gonna put links in the comment section aside from the items themselves, but to the technologies that they use so we don't have to go over you know, the, the way things are designed and work. And you can look at that stuff at your leisure. So, Bush Buddy, one gasifier. It's, it's got a lot of spot welds on it, which are weak points where the Solo Stove doesn't. It looks like it's just a ram pressed kind of thing and it doesn't have nearly the spot welds on it. So a little bit better in that area on the Solo Stove. Also, the Solo Stove comes with other companion pieces. It's got a pot with a lid and it's got a windscreen where the Bush Buddy, all they make is the stove and that's it. So you're going to have to get a pot system to go with it. And what it fits well in is the Snow Peak. This is the Titanium 1400. It weighs in at 7.4 ounces and it's about 60 bucks. But the Bush Buddy fits in there just like Rattles around a little bit, it's a little loose in there, but as a system it's all together. Now the only downside with the Solo Stove is their, their pot, it's just a pot, there's, there's no frying pan that, that comes with it, which I like having a frying pan, it's just one of those things, and, it's, and it doubles as a lid for this. But you know, if you, if you wanted, you could get the, get the Solo Stove and then the Titanium, uh, the Snow Peak uh, pot and pan. But, Hopefully, hopefully Solo Stove will put together uh, a, a pan for their for their system. But overall, not bad. I do like it, and that's what I carry in my Bob. Now this, this is an awesome device. This is a biomass stove. It's called the BioLite. What it is is it it generates electricity, which is really really great if you know you need a small device charged. It's not going to charge your laptop or anything like that. But it's, it's made really well, it's a little heavy, and it's a little expensive. It weighs in at um, 33 ounces, and it runs about 130 bucks. Kind of spendy. This device here is just a, it's just a little size thing that if you've got a smaller pot than what fits on here, this just, you'll be able to fit a smaller pot on there. And then this is the combustion chamber, and then this is the thermoelectric generator. It takes quite a while to charge up something, you know, like a phone from full dead. It, it, it's going to take like a couple hours. So you're, you're going to be burning, you know, quite a few sticks and stuff to get, uh, to get your phone back up to a full charge. But considering, you know, you're making electricity from nothing but twigs, you know, I, I don't know if there's really to complain about with that. It's, it's a good way if it's like if you need to have a phone charged and, you know, this is all you've got, then there you go. Uh, I also carry a, a Goal Zero solar panel with me. Uh, it, just one of those things, it's like you can just set that out in the sun and if you still needed more juice going on at night, you can plug it into this and you've got, uh, you've got a little extra boost there. So the only downside, the other downside with this that uh, I'm not too thrilled with is they, they don't make a companion pot for it and it doesn't nest very well inside like the the snow peak it's it sticks out too far and you know it's just too bulky so i kind of like hinted at by a light a few times it's like hey guys can you can you make a pot for this that it all nests together in and it would be really nice if they did that so just keep in mind if you if you do get this system you're going to need a pot to go with it Next is the power pot, which is a pot and not a stove, but it's also a thermoelectric generating device. So the downside to this is it needs water. 
in order to work. So if you're in, in the colder the water, the better. You can't run this thing dry. It just it, it will not it will burn up the the unit the thermoelectric unit on the bottom here. So if you're in a desert situation or where you don't have a really good water source, I'd steer clear of this. Also, it's a it's another item that's that's spendy. It's uh, about 150 bucks for their their lowest model, their lowest feature model, and uh, it's it's also a little heavy. Not quite as heavy as the the BioLite, but but it is a little on the heavy side. It comes in at uh, 18 ounces. Uh, it comes with a few other little gizmos that are kind of cool. It comes with a uh, USB light that uh, comes in, and then some cut other connectors here, which is you know kind of neat. The uh, other thing that you have to be really careful of is you're going to need a stove for this. I wouldn't set this directly on heat. There's some silicone type uh, caulking in through here between the pot itself and the thermoelectric generator. I really wouldn't want to set that directly on fire. So you're going to need to be thinking of a, a stove to, to go along with this guy. And what I found that's the most compact for that is the, the ember lit. This I've got it already put together here. I'll take it apart because it's a little bit of a pain. But this is the this is the flattest stove that I've seen, and it's also biomass. You just put your you know put your wood and stuff in there, light it up, and then it's got this little grid thing here to set a pot on if it's too small. And then you can feed sticks and stuff right in through this port here. Uh, not a wood gasifier, so it's not quite as efficient as as the wood gas stoves, but that would work just fine and so you've got your full system there but again water really really important for this so you know take that into consideration now the emberlet it it is really cool it breaks down to almost nothing it's it's really really flat now the uh, emberlet weighs in at 11.3 ounces so it's, it's pretty good sturdy metal this is stainless, I think, and it's a little expensive at 40 bucks, but you're paying for design on this as more than materials. And the bag is separate. It doesn't come with a bag, so you've got to spend an extra 8 bucks for a bag. But that's, that's it for the stove. That's pretty darn thin. So that works well together. The other thing, too, is Isbet makes a collapsible grill. This is kind of neat. It all nests in together. I'm not going to pull it apart right now because it's a little bit of a pain to do. But it's a grill, and you, you've got to put the individual rods together, screw the legs on. It takes a little bit of time. But the bad thing about this is, is the grill can warp if you get your, your fire too hot. But other than that, if you like grills, this is really neat. I mean, it's just one tube, and that's it. Rattles around a little bit, but if you're not too concerned with that, it's not a, that's not a major defect. Now, for short term, what I like to use is uh, fuel tabs, and Isbit is probably the leader in, you know, they're, they have knockoffs of this kind of stove, but it just pops open, and you put your fuel, your fuel tabs in here, burn it, and away you go. So, it's, it's a good compact little stove if you're just, you know, short duration. The tabs can make a bit of a mess. They're they're kind of they're kind of leave a residue behind. That I've noticed, but you can leave your fuel tabs in here, close it up, and there you go. And let's see. And this weighs in at 3.25 ounces, and then the stove runs about 10 bucks. So not not bad for an everyday kit, you know, or a 72-hour kit. Everyday kit. This thing, <laughs> also made by Isbit. This is the smallest stove I've ever seen, and I think it actually is rated as the smallest stove available. There it is. It's made of titanium, and it's just this little three-legged little guy. I don't know if that's coming in too well. <laughs> this comes in at a ridiculously light 0 0.4 ounces. It's about 15 bucks though, and it's kind of good for the everyday carry crowd because this, you know, this kind of weighs enough. Then you can put it in a pack, you know, like a little fanny pack or something. And it's pretty stable, you know. I'm kind of, I was kind of surprised that, you know, it doesn't, uh, doesn't move around too much. And then it just fits one Isbit cube there in the middle. And again, Isbit leaves a bit of a residue. And I'd put some tin foil in there or something, otherwise this can get gunked up pretty bad. But, but that's kind of just a neat little guy. 
It's uh, wicked small. So, kind of kind of cute. <laughs> anyway, that's about it. That's the rundown for you know the stoves I'm using and kind of the the pluses and minuses with them. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it was helpful to you.